Gray County. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Good evening. Welcome to Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. I'm Dave Carr. I'm filling in for David Sherman uh, for, uh, I guess, well, this is the last Politically Speaking. I'll also be here on Monday night for election night. We'll talk about that. Um, David Sherman will be back in this chair on this program one week from tonight. So you can all breathe a sigh of relief. We are going to talk about the election as we have been doing. We have had all candidates meetings. We have had municipal clerks. And tonight we have some independent observers of the scene to talk about the issues, to talk about things that are going on. And um, we'll talk about the voting process. We'll talk about the issues. We'll talk about the three municipalities that we are covering. And we may cover a couple of other things as well. I have no idea. When you sit down with Francesca Dobbin from the United Way and Doug Edgar from the Owen Sound Sun-Times and Ann Finley Stewart from the Owen Sound Hub, let's find out. We may end up on hockey. <laughs> we may, well, the, I shouldn't say this, but the, there's a hockey set here that we could just move into oh, at some point. True. Listen, we're covering, we're covering three municipalities, Owen Sound and two neighboring municipalities on election night, Owen Sound, Meaford, and Georgian Bluffs. Uh, and I'm just, just going to throw this open. What is there a dominant issue in each of these municipalities? Uh, and I know there is to you as, as individuals, to the, to the electorate at large, is there a dominant issue that's driving people to the polls? Doug, I'll, I'll start with you and I'll go do, to the... Do you mean for each one individually or... Well, each uh, one or, or any one that, that comes to mind. Well, I, I think uh, affordability of, of just living, uh, which translates into taxes and, uh, and what are you going to do to try to, you know, help people uh, make ends meet. Yeah. So. That seems to be a big concern for people. Uh, how if, how much uh, municipal councils can do to help is another issue, right? Like they get the um, they get uh, they hear from the people, yeah. right? Uh, whether it's in their uh, area of responsibility or not. But I mean, I was just I was going over some of the um, you know uh, positions of, of some of the candidates this morning, and and that is a re recurring theme, I think, and what they're hearing from the Affordability. public. Affordability. Yeah. yeah. I mean, each one has their own issues too, right? Like, uh, Meaford. Meaford has uh, some de development things, and the uh, that. Uh, uh, TC Energy. The TC Energy. I mean, that's yeah. a that's a big issue for them. Yeah. Georgian Bluffs has, um, well, you know that uh, biodigester seems to be something that everybody's talking about after supporting it for all and these you, years. And you know, last week I had the mayor's the, the mayoral candidates of Georgian Bluffs, and 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 we barely talked about it. And in my research, it wasn't until maybe the night before. Um, doing my research, but the night before we did the show, that I started to see more about. I just hadn't seen anything about it in Georgian Bluffs, and now suddenly, I recognize. And and we're, you know, you're you're watching this program like four or five days before election day, and I suddenly realized this that is their that is, that is a singular issue in that municipality. And I'm not sure all the electorate recognize how important that is. You asked the question, yeah. what's driving people to the polls? Yeah. I don't think what people um, will be doing and have been doing on their municipal councils is the same thing as what's going to drive people to the polls. In other words, they're all saying the right things, they're talking about the right things because it's an election. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've watched a lot of issues that Francesca cares very deeply about um, suddenly appear on people's literature and signage and stuff that whoa nobody was talking about yeah but they've they've taken the pulse they know that this is what people are interested in 
but I think when they get back to the table, they're going to be talking about the biodigester and development and development charges and official plans and things that the, most of the public are not really thinking about. Yeah. That's my observation. Francesca. Is an assumption in your question that people are actually driving to the polls, and we saw with the provincial election, turnout's really low. Well, so. Owen Sound, four years ago, 38% yeah. turnout. And, and that's very but, scary. But I still have faith. Oh. That's why I put the question. I, I, I believe in democracy. I, I did one of you know an, an epic road trip around Thanksgiving, and you know, paying attention to all the signs throughout all the small municipalities and the large municipalities. And I just think, you know, you go, guys. Yeah. I have no idea who you are, and I know there's yeah. people behind those names, but you know, good for you, yeah. um, because that takes a lot to, to stand and want to work for your community like that. You know, I've, I've had my name on those signs before myself. Yeah. Um, but I would say housing whether it's development charges, the type of housing, the location of the housing. You know, we, we've seen that conversation in Owen Sound of, no, 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 we can't have that bill because, oh, the poor people will be there. And then we go, yeah, poor people can't afford that development. Well, well, where's the affordable housing then? And it's like, we, we you know, you're getting whiplash yeah. because it's just upset people and they don't necessarily, like it's so complex, some of the issues. Well, you, you were on the open line on Tuesday, two days ago. Talking about, uh, oh, oh, well, you were talking about a variety of things, but I remember kind of near the bottom of the hour in the, in the, in the first half, suddenly there was a call that came in about rent, which uh, I'm doing Monday on the open line, uh, but there was suddenly a call came in about rent, and so when you start to talk about housing, you talk about rent affordability for various strata of people. And then you talk about property taxes for homeowners, and then you talk about affordable housing, and uh, and attainable housing, and nonprofit housing. And um, I mean, what a jigsaw puzzle around one word. Housing. Oh. It's amazing yeah. uh, the number of candidates who's reached out to myself. They've reached out to Jill with a poverty task force. And can you define affordable? Can you define attainable? And I'm like, oh, let me tell you about accessible and appropriate and all the other A words we use around housing because mm -hmm. if, if somebody needs barrier free housing, no stairs because of medical issues, that's a different type of housing. If it needs to be affordable for somebody because they're a senior living on $1,600, $1,700 a month for a new development, not gonna fly. But back to my original question, is, is, is all of that under one umbrella word, um, is that driving people to the polls? I hope it is. It is my genuine hope that people realize that municipal um, decision making is closest to the people. And I hope the candidates know they have levers, they have opportunities, and if they don't, they have the responsibility as humans that walk the planet to do something where they you know, may or may not be able to do something. I get I get the impression that we're going to stay on this for just a minute. I get, I get the impression that because they say so, that they don't believe that they have very much ability. The city defers to the county um, because the city became a county town 15, 20 years ago. The uh, the the Ontario Municipal Act hamstrings hamstrings municipalities on just about every level of creativity, of ingenuity, of innovation. Um, and that's a place where, but... Uh, well, I, I think there's really, there's a, a spectrum, but I think you can divide it into two issues, at least for Owen Sound. One is uh, affordable, you know, the ha just getting somewhere for people to live. Uh, the other is uh, trying to grow the community and you, you know we see these big developments being pursued uh, that are not going to be affordable you know I, I don't think so we're told well I mean we're, no, we're yeah. told they're not going to be affordable. yeah I mean well I mean the, 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 but then again I mean these are business people trying to make as much yeah. money off of their yeah. investment as they can I mean yeah. that's the way it works uh, and just trying to get so the city has been trying to I think get more people here, grow the population, grow the tax base uh, on one hand, and, but, and I think affordable and accessible and uh, uh, attainable housing, that's a whole other 
yeah. issue. The, I think uh, there, and, and I, I think those are the two big divisions. And that's uh, a problem. I think that the the um, in the citizen satisfaction survey in yep. Owen Sound, 29% of people said they were their top issue was homelessness, housing, and affordability. That's a whole big piece because yeah. part of the affordability is about taxes and part of that is about the tax base. So, you know, million and dollar homes are good for doing that. And supply on the other hand. Supply and demand as well. Yep. Right? Like, so, lots of demand. So, yeah. um, so on this, talk about, talk about, I'm, I'm trying to formulate my question. Talk about driving people to the polls, talking about having all this. We have, and, and you kind of refer to it. We have five really big developments in the various planning processes now: the old RCA site, the BCK site, and then Flato Red Hawk, and what used to be Telfer Creek, and now is Barry's Construction. And I don't know if it has a new folksy property name or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we have a bunch more, and more, and more, more in Meaford, and more in Meaford. But mm -hmm. on the five hundred one sound ones. Um, I asked the mayoralty candidates in Owen Sound. I said, I said, I said, at the end of your four-year term, how many of these do you expect to be on the go? And basically, they said, well, I would hope that one or two of them would have been started. Mm -hmm. People don't people don't understand the amount of. You watch Pam Coulter at City Council go through a, a three-ring binder, yeah. and you think, oh boy. And, and then you see Flato on a Zoom meeting saying, we want to get shovels in the ground. And you, you expect that shovels are going to show up in a week to 10 days. And these guys are talking about maybe started but by the end of four years. When all of those, all of those projects started, when we're on the table. Yeah. Um, One's been on interest for six rates, years. Interest rates were basically mm -hmm. zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one, yeah. inflation in other ways. Um, one of the reasons that uh, Mr. Plato, uh, do you remember Close his name? Enough. Yes. Yeah. Um, he said, we want to get shovels on the ground as quickly as possible because of the accelerating construction costs. Yeah. And he started to talk about things like, we have to substitute materials because the materials are too expensive. He said that like, almost a year ago now that's beginning to make me very nervous like what what are you good what are you gonna <laughs> cardboard build? houses I don't know what what yeah. it, you know at, at what point is it going to become impractical for those people to yeah. develop and that's why I think it's one or two yeah. because some of those people they're gonna be winners and losers those the one across from best Western Georgian landing yeah uh, luxury luxury rentals in 2019 yeah okay yeah it's 2022 yeah there's been crickets on that There's site crickets for, on that. for and, three and years. And that is completely, I keep talking to the developer. I keep asking him questions. It's clearly is he, financing. Is, is, is there actually a developer There, there is a man, that? but he just ha doesn't have any money, doesn't okay. have any financing. Mm -hmm. So um, these other people are bigger than that. They probably will last, yeah. but it is, well, uh, they may just decide this This is not, they won't get their return on investment. Well, how long has the BCK for? lot been empty? Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden we have a plan. Yeah. And it's apartments. Yeah, we have a person, we have a plan, we have a site plan. We're starting to see the first approvals, but yeah. we're still a long way from, yeah. yeah. Um, in, 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 this, in this next four years, this is, this is my sense of this, that we have these five in Owen Sound. You talk about the ones in Meaford. Um, Georgian Bluffs is wrestling to a lesser extent about where they want development. Um, they've got Cobble Beach. Um, but I get the sense that in the next four years, we may see this really dramatic shift from housing because we've got, what, 2,800 units kind of in the works in some pro. We may see the shift from housing to affordable until we might start to see more of those adjectives put on. Would that well, there's two things I think that would drive that. Number one is the, the increase in population is more than 10% if all these things got built mm -hmm. and nobody's predicting that like n no no experts are predicting that from gray county planners that's to nobody to consultants nobody okay. so that's number 1 number 2 um, uh, you said you know will it shift it may shift because of what uh, a policy because yeah. One of the mayoral candidates has said, okay, we're going to stop that. Obviously, it was very successful to give everybody a, a 
development charge holiday for apartments. Yeah. That's all that got built. Then that's all yeah. that got built was apartments. But now going forward, he says, well, now maybe we have to talk about you only get that development charge holiday if, if you build. You have, yeah. Okay. Which is why some of them are attainable, whatever that mm -hmm. means, in uh, Strathcona because yeah. because CMHC C CMHC yeah, CMHC came up with uh, mm -hmm. with a reason for Mr. Kusselbring to do that. Let's talk about the voting process because because voting is open now in all three municipalities. Voting goes until 8 p.m. on Monday. Um, in Owen Sound, it is strictly telephone and internet, 100%. In Georgian Bluffs, it's telephone, internet, and going to the polls. And I believe in Meaford, it's strictly going to the polls. Nope. 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 And they have mail. No, they, they have mail. They I have think mail. they have four ways. Yeah, in they may, you may be right about yep. that. You may be right about that. Um, it's been three or four weeks since I talked to those people. Um, let's talk about the Owen Sound process because that's the one I hear the most about. So I'm going to put a little something in before we go, go further along. So the Owen Sound Library staff, we had a briefing, we were invited as the United Way to sit with the Owen Sound Library and, um, at a staff meeting and yep. have a briefing from um, the clerk's department on how to vote and how to support people because the libraries are full of computers. Yes. And uh, Tim at the time asked if his staff could take the oath of office that election officials will take around confidentiality yes. so they could sit beside somebody and Who is computer talk illiterate. them through. And there was a, yes, we can do that. So, and they will also assist somebody from another municipality. It doesn't have to be just Owen Sound. So if somebody is challenged Good. and wants to sit with somebody, go to the Owen Sound Library. And I Good. just want to put that out there, that uh, that's an option. You don't have to be from Owen Sound. You can be from... That's uh, a fantastic they won't help option. Anybody. Yeah. Other, mini other libraries throughout the region, it varies. Some will get you set up, but they won't sit beside you. Mm. You know, they'll answer a question as much as they can, yeah. but they, you know, so it varies across. You know, if we go yeah. back to the days of printing vaccine passports, those were our libraries. Yep. Um, and that was a fun thing, too. But yeah. that's what Owen Sound has done. So if anybody is challenged, head on down to the library and see if you can get some help from uh, some of the library staff. Fantastic. If you are challenged, if you know somebody who is challenged, tell them. Give tell them a them. ride. I mean, one of the things you hope comes out of a session like this is more word of mouth. You tell somebody, you tell somebody, you tell somebody. And the people who want to vote and may not have that internet option that they want to go to the library. That's, that's and fantastic. there are also help centers at the City Hall and uh, Heritage yeah. Mall in, yep. in specific and, hours. And if you're, yes. unhoused, if you're unhoused, if you're unhoused, you don't have a, a legal address and you're staying with friends, whether you're or you're staying under a bridge, you can use Safe and Sound as yep. your address and the Great County yeah. Administration Building yeah. as your address for the purposes of voting. Purposes and, of voting. and we as the United Way can vouch and say yes, you know, we know Anne, she is a resident of the city under the definition of this is where she spends most yeah. of her time. You do not actually have to have a roof over your head. The definition is actually quite accommodating. But um, back to, the, back to the, the, the process, or and I guess the library is part of the process. Um, and I don't know if it's just older Owen Sounders or not. I hear a lot of pushback against not being able to go to the poll and cast my ballot in the traditional manner. Should we be going to the polls? You know, for Owen Sound, uh, a relatively small geographic area with a lot of people, uh, I was a little surprised to see that they didn't have any, you know, physical polls mm -hmm. this time. I mean, when you've got a big spread out municipality and a lot of people that may have the right to vote there but don't necessarily live there all the time, like you look at Town of the Blue Mountains or something, internet voting makes a lot more sense. Um, I think it's all just arising out of the, the pandemic, right? Like with so many things we sure. got away from doing in person. Uh, 
So Although, in, I mean, except, this is the second time exactly. we've done this, and yeah. there was no pandemic when we did this in Between 2018. Between 2010 yeah. and 2012. So well, last time, if memory serves yeah. for the city. In 2014. I honestly don't remember. I was fully retired. And didn't we have, like, 24 hours? 24 hours. There, where they had to yeah. extend the voting the period 24 hours day. because uh, there had, was a, had, a... Across a, Ontario, they had to extend the voting period for 24 yeah. hours. Okay. But in 2014, when they discussed this at the beginning, the, the, the deal was this is going to be cheaper, that's going to have a higher voter turnout and it's going to have more young people voting. So 2018 they do it. It's 24 hours late. The voter turn the voters list was down a thousand people, which okay. is disturbing yeah. enough. But the uh, voter turnout was down by eight percent. It was abysmal. Eight uh, percent, four percent. And my biggest complaint is they never discussed that. So. It, it got sort of discussed in a committee and then it came to council and within seven minutes or whatever it was passed that we would do this again yeah. in, in 2022 without any discussion. It was cheaper. It was cheaper by several thousand dollars. It was cheaper. But yeah. it did not increase voter turnout. Yeah. And yeah. there were lots of complaints. And some of the biggest complaints were about the fact that people were getting three voters cards or five voters cards. Like, you know, a voter card for my ex-wife and my three children who haven't lived here for 20 years. Let's talk about this but, because because well, yeah. just today <laughs> um, in this studio, we heard from people who said, I got voter cards for my three children. I got voter cards who, who live in this community and that province, uh, you know, you know they, they're not in Owen Sound, they haven't been in Owen Sound. And when I asked, it's illegal to use that, of course, it breaches yeah. an act, it's illegal to use that card. Yeah. When we asked, how can you follow up, how, how can how you, do know? you know, there was no answer. Yeah. The answer was, it's on the honor system. And m my bigger concern, 40% of people, so we know it's, this is done by impact, this voters list, 40% of the people in Owen Sound are renters. Mm -hmm. The biggest, second biggest, Moving day is September the first. Yep. The impact voters list closed August thirty first. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> after that, you had to go in person to get on it's the classic. voters list. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, people have said to my face, "I can't be bothered going down there." They said they want to vote there and they've always go. voted. Yep. But the fact that they're left off the voters list when they've lived there for twenty years yep. pisses them off so much that they're actually not going to vote. I, I appreciate mean, that. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like I, it. I, but, I understand it. But to think that there are people who are not on the voters list who should be, and people I, who are on the voters list who shouldn't be, and we never even talked about it have publicly. You voted? I have not yet. Okay. And you know why? Because Don Telford died. I mean, not that I would have voted for Don Telford because he's in South Bruce Peninsula, but yeah. I don't. I'm not going to vote ahead of time because anything could happen. Because anything could happen. Yeah. That's an interesting. That's my own point. personal feeling. No, that's an interesting. Have you voted? No, and for a lot of the same reasons. I mean, I, uh, you, you, you never know. Have you voted? <laughs> I did because I wanted to test the system, see how, how it worked. Vote? I voted online. I sat in my office yep. and just, it took me five minutes. I came home from the open line yesterday morning and I walked in my front door and I took off my hat and I sat down in my great chair and I said to Rosemary, let's vote. And we went online and I put in the, my birth date and my PIN number and I selected my candidates and it showed me a confirmation and said, check this, are these, is this really? And I submitted and I was done. It was remarkably easy. I you know, also chose to undervote. So I only voted for the candidates I absolutely wanted. Uh, yeah. and, and it told me, you have the ability to vote for two more people. If you, and you so said, thank you, I know that, but I'm not going to. Yes, it was, but it was yeah. nice to have that check mm -hmm. of, you know what, you haven't clicked all seven council That's members. That's interesting. Um, I, and I appreciated that, but I'm like, no, I've decided, I, I purposely decided to undervote. And I, I only voted vote. for all seven so that, so that I had my say for all seven council seats. I would hate to see somebody sitting in a council seat that would make me say, I coulda, shoulda. But yeah, but for so me, I there were five a, that I, I was went, like, yep, yeah. I'm, I'm totally behind, and I'm not going to fill in two more oh, on I think that. It's like, I think it's what like if, provincial and federal politics. Sometimes you have to hold your nose oh, and vote. So. What if everybody picks their seventh pick and 
they, they get, everyone votes for the, their, their seventh most favorite person, but they tell up the polls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the eighth person is the, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, is the one you might worry about. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 do I care if they top the polls? They're, well, if, because if they were one of my seven, they're going to be on council. Yeah. So you had seven. Yeah. I think Francesca's yeah. saying, and I yeah. feel the same way. I don't yeah. have seven. No, I, I wish yeah. I had seven, but I they don't. I think a, a general rule, in no matter what kind of system you're using for voting, is you vote for the people that you want to see. Uh, in office, the, you know, yeah. don't people don't vote pe don't vote people out. Yeah. Don't be don't get too don't don't get too clever and get too strategic because that can yeah. come back and bite, you know, all yeah. of us. And uh, so I'd like to believe I voted for good people. So take a well, moment and celebrate that freedom <laughs> of being able to make that choice because yeah. you know we see yep. what's going on in other areas of our planet and but who can vote and who cannot vote. And you know we had Persons Day the other day where you know a um, hundred years that we we as yeah. women have been allowed yeah. to vote. Yep. Yeah. And my mother that's wasn't a, wasn't a living person. living memory for people still. Dave, something so. you said uh, really I, I hadn't even thought about this before, but you said you know you went home and the two of you sat down and decided to vote. Um, when you're doing this by phone and by internet, you don't know, uh, like you don't have the same controlled environment that you have at a polling place. No. You know, like you could be hanging over her shoulder saying, don't vote for that guy. He's a, and, and know, that's a right? concern. Uh, I'll not discuss the no, but process it, and, in, and, our, and that's, in our home, but, yeah. uh, but you know what I mean? Like, not, that was raised even by, what by people if somebody with, comes in the to the door and center. says, I can help you vote, and they're yeah. helping you vote for their guy. I mean, there is a, there, there's certainly not anything there like is a, There is a harsh reality in, in what you say. And, yeah, you're and the domestic right. violence sector is concerned about that coercion of, okay, I've got all your pins, thank you, I'm the you know, head of the household, whoever I am in that yeah. moment, I'm going to take these, you are not capable, and I'm going to do this for you. And, and that's a risk with not going to that polling station. Yep. And again, because of the cards, you can be voting for your uh, kids who are away at university. Before they even come, came home for Thanksgiving, you could have vote, well, yeah. maybe not, but you no. know, you could have already voted for them. Yeah. It, the fact that you can vote for other people, as long as you know their birth date, and of course, for the guy with the ex-wife and the four grown children, yeah. it did happen to know all their birth oh, dates. We, we so had a lot of he's got all their PIN numbers. Yeah. We had a lot of Serb theft by family members who had the social insurance number and knew the birth date of their family member, and unbeknownst to, to them, and they, were, they knew they didn't qualify, so they weren't filing for Serb, but their family member put in their information, their banking, and it went, oh, mm. oh yeah. Mm. And, and our thing is go straight to the police station because then when CRA comes back and says, uh -uh, you have a yeah. police report. Right. Yeah, this one is not really follow upable. I remember at the last, in 2018, a candidate said to me, well, apparently I have the right to send a scrutineer, but what would that scrutineer do? And the people who did go, they so okay, yeah. it's pressed a button, said it's over, you lost, <laughs> go home. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, there is no scrutiny and there's no re. No there is re something I don't understand for those of you who haven't voted yet. At the end of the process, it gave me a four An audit. digit code that I could audit my vote after the polls close. I don't know what that means, but I copied down the code and Rosemary copied down her code, and I'm certainly going to test it when the election is over to see what that's all about. Hmm. A lot of voices, and I don't know if it's just a vocal minority or what it is, a lot of voices clamoring for change in more in the, again, in the city of Owen Sound than, than in the other two municipalities. And, and I must confess, I'm an Owen Sound voter. I'm not as conversant, even after talking to mayoralty candidates, I'm not as conversant with everything, I, I guess with the tone and the flow that's been going on. But in Owen Sound, a lot of voices clamoring for change. I'm reminded of the old joke about, about the neighbors who are moving, people who are moving from one neighborhood to another, and they say, what are the neighbors here like? And, and they say, what were the neighbors like in your old neighborhood? <laughs> and the one couple says, well, uh, they were friendly and beautiful, and we traded recipes, and we got together, and we had a block party. And they said, I think you'll find the same thing here. And this, what were your neighbors like? Oh, they were crabby and they were awful. They closed their doors. You never got to talk to them. They said, I think you'll find the same thing here. <laughs> I am, uh, I wonder how, at the end of four years, how much different is, and we don't know what's going to happen. How much different is the electorate going to find their municipal council 
four years from now, from what from the council they're clamoring for change on now. I think it's. Do you understand my question? Not not a hundred percent, but I'm willing to take a stab at it. <laughs> okay. um, I think it, in four years they'll understand the scope of what they can change. Um, what I really hope they change is is communication. Um, They've and, all talked about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and a greater understanding of what's going out there instead of just simply saying it's not our jurisdiction um, of going, okay, what it is it that can we do? Where can we listen? How do we participate better and respond? You know, the, you, you alluded to the, the customer the customer service, um, the community um, survey. Yes. And the number one issue was, was housing and affordable housing mm -hmm. and homelessness. Well, sorry, we're going to set that aside. Well. You don't get to do that. Your community, you asked them what you thought, it told you what it thought, and you can't just say, well, I, yeah. you know, I'd you've say got, got to motto, deal with it. City motto should be, let Gray do it. <laughs> you know, it get to feel like that. Um, yeah. And I think it's interesting that you say what, really what you're asking, I think, is in four years, will they be still crabbing about the same things? Is that what you're that, asking? Well, that, that's part of it. No, I think I, I, the communication thing, I think, is the key because I think we, the electorate, are woefully uninformed about how council actually works, what it can do, what it can't do, what its powers are, what its limits are. And, I mean, uh, it, listening to the September 12th and the September 26th meetings, of Owen Sound City Council, at least one of which you were at. I don't know if you were at both. You were at one. Of, and I really got the impression from the group that, that you were with on one and the group the two weeks before. I got the impression that, that the attitude was that City Council could wave its hand and things would change. I got that impression from the people who were coming to the microphone. Well, we and, need and, to go and, back and, to grade and I think 10 four years civics. from now, I wonder if people are still going to be saying, hey, why can't you wave your magic wand and, and, and do this? Yeah, civics. And we need the civics, civics. because we, we saw this with the provincial election and the federal election that, that people in the community don't know who has what responsibility. So we're going to yell at the federal government about mass mandates, which were implemented by the provincial government. And then, you know, everything that we really loved about the pandemic response in the CERB, go province. and. <laughs> wasn't yeah. the province yeah. you know and then we're going to go to the municipality and say you know you need to build shelters and it's like okay you we had money we had COVID money we were able to do so much around social issues when we had COVID money and now we've turned the tap off so now people mm -hmm. are back on the street because yeah. the programs have been shut down because they turned the funding off yeah. I, yeah I think the answer to your question is yes in four years people will be uh, doing that I, I think that there's there's two things though. One is, I, I you you say uh, the electorate doesn't seem to know the roles of councils and who does what and uh, different areas that like that. Um, I, clearly, some of the people running don't know either <laughs> oh. because they're. They say, I'm going to come in and I'm going to fix all these problems. Yeah. And it's like it, I've been a reporter for like over 30 years. Yep. You're not, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like good for you for for being if 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 it's an honest belief that I mean I I, I see these problems and I want to fix them, that's great. But there's going to be a frustrating and, and learning that lack process of knowledge, for some of these folks. You know, we've had the in. candidates come to Jill and I, and say, oh, we we should have community gardens and have uh, you know people who are street involved grow their own food, and we're like, so like the community gardens outside the United Way and the food forest the CMHA runs and the gardening program and and the brunch program, you know, like all of these things. Oh, we didn't know what was happening. Yeah. And it yeah. happened over and over again. They would come to us and say, well, you should, and we're like, here's all the places that is actually happening. Yeah, that's you know that it's it's a fundamental problem of uh, how how do you better inform people? I mean, I sort of uh, split the newcomers into like the the incumbents are running on their record, obviously, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are are um, sort of shouting, "We couldn't do that! We couldn't do that!" <laughs> um, to, counter that but of the newcomers I find there are people who have done their work did you ask the question about have people read the Municipal Act was that your 
question. No, it was at no. the Meaford All Candidates yeah. meeting, yeah. and uh, Jeff Solomon said, "Have have you read the Municipal Act at least about what you can and can't do?" Yeah. And that was his question to yeah, candidates. Um, we haven't asked our candidates that, but I think we should because my observation is there are candidates who've been preparing to run for a year or more, mm -hmm. and they've done the homework and they've watched the old meetings and read stuff, and then there are people who are just as passionate, just as interested in their community, but have no idea yeah. what they can and about can't do. The, about I, the harsh reality of the legalities of it. I think Owen Sound, too, has a structural problem with uh, uh, the way we live versus how we're governed, you know, as the, the city is the center for the whole region. This, 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 the city of 20,000 yeah. is, is, is the market and recreation center for a population of about 50 to 60,000. Yeah. And employment. And employment, yes, yeah, and yeah. employment, thank you. Yes. And, People and are, social, we're all working in the this. The social thing. services are there as well. Yeah, yeah. So if you find yourself homeless in Southampton, you're getting to Owen Sound. Because there's, there's food here, there's resources here that's, that's not in Southampton. Which right. is interesting, living in Owen Sound, because I believe that Saugeen Shores, as a municipality, uh, and maybe I'm ignorant on this, I believe that Saugeen Shores has been actually getting all of that by virtue of having the, the Bruce plant and all the people that yeah, work Yeah, but they there. don't have an O share. Yeah. And they yeah. don't have a safe and sound. They don't need one, because everybody works at the Bruce. Yeah. That's and everybody just, who needs help comes just, to Owen Sound. That's yeah. just, yeah, and everybody who needs help <laughs> that's comes, the, comes to Owen so Sound. So when people say, we so, don't have any homeless people in Georgian Bluffs, um, A, yes, yeah, you do. Yeah, you but do. B, um, people who really need stuff have yeah. to they're, come into town, in town to get it. They're in town right now. Um, I want to check with my producer and see where I am and what I'm doing here for just this uh, moment, because uh, I don't have any audio. So, okay, we're going to take a break. Um, for some reason, I don't have audio, so I'll just tell Mark that, and I'll tell all of you that we are going to come right back with Francesca Dobbin, Doug Edgar, and Ann Finley Stewart on Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. I like this. We're going to take a break. Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Raven Reads. Unbox Indigenous Voices. Subscribe today at ravenreads.org. Watching Rogers TV. Smudging is a very important part in our life as we are learning to walk the good way. When we smudge, we use the sacred medicine, the white sage, the sweet grass, the tobacco, and the cedar. It cleanses negative energy and replaces it by a positive energy. When I smudge, I cleanse my end and my eagle feather and start cleansing my breath to have better words. I will smudge my eyes so I could see the better things offered to me. I will smudge my ears to hear the good thing that people have to say. I will smudge my hair to have good thinking from my head. I will bring the smudge to my feet so I could walk in respect with our mother, the earth. Smudging is the way we give our prayers to connect our spirit to the Creator. We express gratitude for the gift of life, the learning, and growth. Hi, I'm Dave Carr. Here at Rogers TV, we're covering the elections in Georgian Bluffs, Owen Sound, and Meaford. We'll have a media panel to look at the issues in those three communities. It'll be on Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. I'm Dave Carr, sitting in for David Shearman. I'm joined tonight by Francesca Dobbin of the United Way, Doug Edgar of the Owen Sound Sun-Times, and Ann Finley Stewart of the Owen Sound Hub, and we're discussing the municipal election. Over the last several weeks on this program, you have heard from uh, the mayoralty candidates in uh, three uh, communities. Owen Sound, Georgian Bluffs, and Meaford. You've heard from your municipal clerks. And we're just doing kind of an overview conversation about the election. The polls close Monday at 8 p.m. So you have all of this time, basically for some of you, 24-7, to cast your ballots, especially by telephone and internet. The polls are also open now in both uh, Georgian Bluffs and Meaford, so you can go to the polls cast your ballot and of course all day Monday till 8 p.m. 
We will be back here on Monday night at 8 p.m., and you can join us and see your vote counted right here on Rogers TV, the local campaign. We're chatting about the campaign. Um, I put this question in, and I'm going to throw it out. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to toss it. I'm going to throw it on the table. Just very quickly, the Harrison Park bird story. I've heard nothing about it in this campaign. Does it have any impact on voters, Francesca Donovan? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think it was just a, a horrible thing that happened. It's something that happened. It's something that happened. There's an opportunity to have a conversation about the park and where do we go forward. Um, a lot of grief in the community around it. Um, but, you know, an understanding that this is not a failure on anybody's part. Mm -hmm. I know I've bumped into park staff and um, my daughter's a vet tech, so I was interested in, in more. Yeah. Uh, so when I was visiting with her, I could tell her more from that yeah. science side of things there. And as soon as I said the Harrison Park birds got bird flu, you know, she just, oh my gosh, yeah. she knew what that meant. Yeah. And I said, we saved the swans. Yeah. Um, you know, I have heard from some people who, who were not into animals in, in any kind of captivity whatsoever of, okay, now we can have that conversation. Okay. So yeah. it may come, mm -hmm. but I don't think it is there now. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's a, a municipal issue. I think um, Harrison Park is this gem for this city and people are very passionate about it. That aspect of Harrison Park will become a conversation piece over these next four years. Absolutely. But not between now and the 24th. No. And I no. remember I when there were deer at Harrison Park. And, yeah. and when, when the deer naturally ended, you know, came to the end of their life, there was, you know, I don't remember any debate or anything of do we get more deer in. Okay. I do like, though, I do think it's a real opportunity for that conversation. There are two things recently that happened and immediately in started um, GoFundMe things. One was the birds and the other were the grandstand at, at mm -hmm. uh, Victoria grandstand Park. At and both of these Haven't are things about, about which people have a lot of nostalgia and there are plans. There are plans about Harrison Park and there are plans about Victoria Park that are out there that are worth revisiting and, and r discussing. Um, and I think this is a real opportunity for community engagement because once you start a GoFundMe and then people have put their money on putting a blast pla brass plaque on the grandstand, yep. even though the grandstand as it stands is not part of the new Victoria Park plan yeah. because it's not close enough to the track and various other things, but people have nostalgia and yeah. before you know it, that kind of runs well, things instead of saying really what, how we need to run things is having a conversation before. Bigger, broader. And yeah. that's what we did with the All Queen's Park Bandstand, which turned 10 years this yep. year, was the city came out is and said... Really ten? It is 10 wow. years old, that project. Yep. And it was, you know, the city came out and said, we are not rebuilding this. And people got nostalgic about it, and we said, okay, let's have the conversations. Yeah. Yep. What can we do? What resources can we pull together? And it, it was totally grassroots. And, and for the city, but also, it was do we want get, this? Is get out of the way. Right. Yeah. For a yeah. lot of yeah. it, yeah. With that, and and poor Pam Coulter, yeah. which, which may be the new um, reality yeah. over and, the next. But how to do on city property with things like with what the scenic city order of good cheer does yeah. of goes and creates something and then says here this is yours now. Yeah. And there's an obligation then to maintain that, and and I'm sure sometimes the city goes, oh, oh great, more yeah. things to pay for. <laughs> I have to buy more paint. Yeah, exactly, but. You know, that's what makes this city great is the community turns around and says, you know what? You may have decided as a council, no. Well, you know what? We're doing it anyway. Yeah. Dr. Recruitment. Hmm. What's going to happen, do you think? Oh, well. Uh, my, my opening I, question, because we're doing this five days before the election is, is, is that an issue that's going to drive people to the polls? And then we'll go from there. Uh, well. I don't think there's a lot of differentiation between the candidates about doctor recruitment. Like, I, I think, and and what people, what they can actually do about it is is different again. Yeah. And it, it, it's something that kind of came up late in the campaign. I yeah. think, uh, very important to people. Yeah. Especially if you don't have a doctor. Uh, yeah, very. But and you're again, trying to grow. again, and you know, to grow it, a community. It, it's one of those things where. I think the the city has to take a leadership role as far as being an advocate, but do they have the power to 
to fix the problem. Well, and, and the problem that's beside the problem that's beside the problem, yeah. that, and then you finally come around to, well, we need housing for the nurses and, and the, you know, the support staff that go around a doctor, and, and we don't, you know, because if well, you think if you're a professional like a nurse or, you know, uh, an x-ray technician or something, you want a house on a quarter of an acre, and we're going to give you $1,700 a month out of the RCA, <laughs> because that's all you can afford. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we need the workers to build the buildings and you know when developers come to me and say you know there's nowhere for my workers to build or to to live while we build these million dollar houses and it's and, like and I, the kind yeah. of thing, this, is, this is long before Doug was editor at the Sun Times and I can't remember who the editor was I was all set to hire a, a news person at at CFOS brilliant news person she wound up working in Toronto for years and years and years and years, and years. she was the kind of voice we needed her husband was a newspaper reporter and there wasn't a job for him in Owen Sound. They never came. Yeah. And spousal, I mean, the point is spousal employment yeah. is... I got one at, at, a, at a community meeting the chamber built. I got the, the college fighting with the hospital and fighting with, um, I think it was the Board of Education, about why each other would not hire the spouses when they each had the expert that they each wanted. Yeah. And, and then yeah. they, you know, and I just sat back and like... No, yeah. here, see, fight amongst yourself. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and we've talked about this on, on previous programs, that Owen Sound is not, and the mayor, as the incumbent mayor has talked about this, and I think all the councillors know that, the, the, the city is not eligible for grants because we're considered service. Georgia Bluffs is eligible for grants, and on our show last week, I think that came as a bit of a surprise to them, that they are eligible for the incentive mm. grants to get doctors to come to Georgian Bluffs. And I said, do you care if they work in Owen Sound? They're going to live in Georgian Bluffs. And they said, yeah. It's, it's, so I I, I... I think that, again, that, that gets back to the uh, the issue of, you know, how we live versus how we're governed. Actually, I, I think it's a beautiful example of that. You know, the city of Owen Sound, uh, their candidates are having their uh, feet held to the fire. Of what are you doing to get more doctors? Yeah. Well, they don't even... They you can't. Know, they, they, they don't. They don't. They don't get the grants. But the the municipalities outside, and it's all one big social. Like we're all one big community, well, it, it, to a great extent. Well, that isn't isn't they're that working at the hospital? They're also, yeah. I mean, the yeah. patients yeah. come from so, around and about, and their workplace it could be anywhere. I mean, yep. the, the answer is going to have to be a, a cooperative. Effort. Some kind of cooperative, no. which leads me into a conversation about uh, conversations among municipalities. Um, there was an undercurrent in the three, really in two of the three mayoralty debates that I did here at Rogers TV, there was a slight undercurrent of municipalities, I, I don't, I'm going to put this incorrectly, they were kind of they were kind of laughing at the concept of getting anything done. They, they, they recognize that conversations among them are, I mean, I mean, they haven't even been elected yet, not till Monday night, and, and they understand the harsh realities of they don't want to talk to us, or they're going to make us pay through the nose, or they're not interested in they, they want a share of the pie, but they don't want to pay. But all of these things are just flowing back and forth. And, uh, and I, again, this is one of the things that I think is really going to emerge over the next four years as a, a conversation or conversations that there needs to be a lot of conversation about. And are we back to the discussion which um, seemed to be fairly loud in 2014, which was um, county, uh, either merging the two counties, for one, um, officially, or doing away with lower tier governments. Just having a, a, I think this is what Doug's talking about when he says we don't live. Yeah, that was we, a, we a, a live, push from the Owen Sound Chamber was really heavy into that. There was a, there was a bigger push earlier, and then that yeah. sort of disappeared. But when I listened to all of these um, uh, debates locally, it, it's quite clear what the problems are of you can say I want you to cooperate on this I want you to you know help with this 
it either becomes let Gray do it, in which case you have to ask yourself, why do we have municipal lower tier governments? Or um, there's no advantage to them. Uh, at yeah. the uh, mayor's debate in Owen Sound, uh, Richard is saying everything is on the table, amalgamation, annexation, and uh, sure, Ian sure. is saying they don't want to do it. And Georgian Bluff said flat out on, on here on Rogers TV, said there's never going to be amalgamation, annexation, that not, at least not with those two. He said, Georgian Bluff says you're, you're not getting Sarawak Township. And, and well, that's why. Just bang, bang, bang. It's not going to happen. On, but well, you look at West Gray and Hanover right so now. West Gray and Hanover, and we talked about that because two of the candidates for Georgian Bluffs are on are on Gray County Council, and they were on opposite sides. So we talked about that as it pertains to what they might do in Georgian Bluffs at some point. But yeah, I mean, you're not, you know, these because these uh, municipalities are being led by people who they're they're. Uh, their concern, I mean, their their marching orders come from the people who are saying, "Well, what's in it for me?" Mm -hmm. You know, I, if you're in Georgian Bluffs and your and your property taxes are very low, um, are you going to jump up and say, "You know, I'd like to"? Uh, hey, I, I just feel like I should my property taxes should be higher because you know it's more fair. Yeah. Like until somebody comes along, like a <laughs> province. And, and says, guess what, You're, this you is to going to happen, yeah. then it's not going to happen. Look, look, because where's the incentive? Look at George and Bluff <laughs> wrestling with, with what to do with water in Potawatomi Village. They're talking about bringing water down from East Linton. You ask anybody you know and sound about that, and they all just shake their heads. So is, is Potawatomi Village going to get water from Owen Sound? Not without some deeper discussion on the level that I've never heard. I remember when there. Richie saying as soon as you give them water there's going to be no reason for anybody to build. There will be no development in Owen Sound if you're going to give our water to yeah. people who have lower taxes. But, yeah. I grew up in Sarawak uh, in a subdivision uh, a Veterans Land Administration subdivision that had city water mm -hmm. and again that was something though where um, uh, I believe it was the federal government said, and I'm, uh, this was this. the way before I was even born. Yeah. They said, "We're we're building this, and guess what? You guys are going to provide water to, to it." So sometimes, you know, the you need someone else to step in and say, you know, in, for the greater good, you know, like yeah, you're going to you're going to have to pay more. But then again, you've been kind of getting away with having all these services and and everything that the city provides without paying for it for all these years. And then you see in Meaford where you the last time the province stepped We've in and amalgamated. So about Meaford tonight. Yeah, so yeah. when when we had the amalgamation the the Mike Harris amalgamation um, when I look at the discussions in Meaford and especially around development there are the people who live in town who are going the well we don't town. we don't want to we don't want to build and we want to have our nice little town and there are people outside saying we don't want you to build on our agricultural land yep. so we got two minis uh, two um, townships and the town of Meaford they're united but they're not united exactly yeah. and Georgian Bluffs I think is having the same problem um, maybe on a more uh, macro than micro, they've got Cobble Beach, which is just going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing. It's projected to be 10,000 people someday. Fine. But you're starting to see the first houses at Killside, and they're wondering what should, what, what should they do at Shallow Lake, and what should they do at Katy, and, and that's a, a wrestle that they're going to have. I don't think Meaford has the same wrestle. They're starting to have development outside of the town of Meaford mm -hmm. on what they call the settlement lands. So th they're, I don't think they have the same complexities in, in Meaford because it, they don't have any other urban centers. It's a I, little bit Bogner, different. It's maybe? not about that Woodford. so much as it's I mean, about Apple land and it's about, yeah. uh, well, and it, again, about people paying taxes for things that they don't actually uh, enjoy. I think for Meaford too, it, there's a lot more about affordability. You know, like they're they're trying, and I think they can look they're next door. They're getting encroachment from the east. I was going to say they can look at town of the Blue Mountains and see what happened there. And see what's coming. Where you have these, you know, prices and uh, everything is being driven up to the point where a working guy like me 
can't afford to live there. You know, and, and they're the employment, the um, the bedroom community for Blue Mountain. Yeah, but they're expensive. Yeah, and there's not a lot of stock there, and there's there's actually no social agency. So if we wanted to go over and do an intro, you know a day of something in Meaford, there is no charity outside of like their food bank that has a location. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's been, you know, this, you know, to bring in an Ontario works person or somebody like that, or yeah. you know, our SOS outreach programs and things. There's nothing in Meaford, and it's it's really quite interesting, you know, from that that dynamic of of the town. Meaford, and we didn't talk nearly enough about this when I had the mayoralty candidates on. Meaford is going to have an infrastructure issue. Um, well, they have it now, and how that manifests itself. They, mm -hmm. they need a new pool. They need a new community center. They need several new facilities and developments. They need, they need to fix or replace the ones they have, and they need to start embracing for the new. I want to go back to sort of negotiations. I'm, I'm reminded of Bruce County has a countywide library system. I'm reminded of the effort for Gray County to try to achieve a countywide library system. And it was very specifically the town of the Blue Mountains who said, man, we think we'll go it alone. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened again on roads. Um, they were talking about some changes in road programs in Gray County, and the town of the Blue Mountains said, man, we might just take things over and just do it all ourselves. The town of the Blue Mountains has had, and I think the, I don't know whether the people have changed enough, the people who were saying these things out of out of town hall. But the town of the Blue Mountains just had this attitude that, that, that we are so rich, we pay more into the county than we get out, and we might as well just do our own thing. I don't know if, I don't know if that's going to manifest itself anymore or not, but. I think you're going to hear the talk, but I don't mm -hmm. think uh, anybody is going to give them the ability to do so. And if you go across the county line, Wasaga Beach and yeah. Collingwood, I don't think, are quite as enthusiastic no. about joining up. No, they're together. not. They're so. definitely not. What's, what's going to, um, we've got two minutes left, what's going to foment the conversation about amalgamation, one county, one tier, two, whatever, it, what's going to foment, and is it going to happen in this next four-year term of council? I don't think so. Okay. Unless, okay. unless you see big changes coming from the rules from the province, which I wouldn't put out, you know, <laughs> some of the changes that they've already said they're going to do, like yeah. with the land tribunal and things like that. Yeah. It's like, Super oh, wait a minute, you guys are getting yeah. in the way yeah. of development, so you're, we're going to get you out of the way. Well, a lot of people's voices are being lost in that. Yeah. So. Uh, you never but say it, never. Are the right, right voices getting lost or the no. wrong voices getting lost? I mean, I guess it depends on who yeah. you want to listen to. Yeah. I think a lot of people that should have a say are, are not going to have as much of a say yeah. as, as they, they are. Uh, really quickly, uh, I've got less than a minute. Uh, municipal transit. Uh, you expect to see more, bigger, expanded. Uh, we've got to address climate change, and okay. transit is a core. For addressing climate change. Okay. All right. Doug, quickly? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. And? Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting to hear one of the candidates in Owen Sound talk about 24 7 transit and a whole new way of thinking. Yeah, that. Okay. I think it's worth having the whole conversation. It's interesting how, you know, when the, once the gas money started flowing, oh, we can't possibly run a bus between two different towns. Now they're going all the way to. Orangeville and Guelph. Yeah. That's where we have to leave it tonight. <laughs> Thank you to the three of you for coming in and chatting about this. Francesca Dobbin from the United Way, Doug Finley Stewart from or, or Doug Finley Stewart, <laughs> Doug Edgar from the Owen Sound Sometimes, and Finley Stewart from uh, the Owen Sound Hub. David Sherman here next week on Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media.
watching hockey just got a power play with NHL Center Ice and Super Sports Pack. With up to 37 out-of-market NHL games a week, you'll 